Food Slide is essentially a food blog that Jack and I started when we were in lockdown. Basically us cooking recipes that people want to eat. Throwing in bacon, throwing in butter. Basically just being complete sluts. So we're down at Provisioner's Restaurant where we're hosting a month-long pop-up and today's the first day of trying our recipes. Hi guys. <laughs> My name is Rachel and I'm the marketing manager at Provisioners. I kind of followed Jack and came across Foodsat and thought it was a brilliant idea. And then I thought it would be a, a fun idea to see if they actually wanted to put their recipes to the test properly in an actual professional kitchen. So we've got a lot to get through. We only had the kitchen for five and a half hours. We've got Tom, the food sucker chef we've been working with, coming down from like near Stoke. He's about to arrive. Uh, we've got to get all the recipes done, and then <laughs> going to see what happens. So here's where uh, a lot of slutty food gets made. It's the uh, the deep fat fries. You have the vegan one, and then you have the normal one. Um, so yeah, we've got the croquettes, the Nashville hot chicken, fries, like a lot. Of the thing I'm most excited about is go with the Nashville hot chicken. Like, you can't really get it and no one really does it properly in the UK. We've got limited amount of chefs, but we have like a bit of an extensive menu. So today we're basically trying everything and going to see what makes the cut. Um, I want it all to go on there, but I guess we have to be slightly realistic and try and get as much as we can on there. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, yeah, Not good, bad. Good, good. Nice uh, to meet you, fun. <laughs> <laughs> when we started Foodsock, we were kind of looking at accounts which, like, who did kind of slutty food, and like Tom's was kind of ones that came up. And then he started following us, we started following him, and then we matched, <laughs> and now here we are. <laughs> it's like Tinder for chefs. <laughs> Northeast England, Seoul, and Korea, <laughs> and the Caribbean. <laughs> with it, with it, oh. Teesside. Teesside, <laughs> yeah, representing Borough. So yeah, we're taking some photos um, for the promo shots for our Instagram account. And do you know what I mean? You eat with your eyes and they're going to look amazing. So yeah, so Jack and I, we started Food Slut together. We've been friends forever and I was living at his in lockdown. And so we started this food blog um, and it's kind of, kind of exploded and here we are in the kitchen of a real restaurant. So next door, him and Tom are basically going through some of the dishes that are going to be on the menu. Um, I think they're currently doing the smash burger. So he's kind of giving him a cooking lesson. Jack is like the co-founder of Food Slut. He does all like the meat things. So yeah, this is just like now part of his life, I guess. Go for it. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> we met at university. We lived in a student house in university. We used cook to cook in, cook in these little small little ovens which had two hogs. Yeah. Jack, Jack refused to eat the university food. And that's not true. <laughs> I tried, sampled the university food and it wasn't for me. <laughs> but I'd say our quality of cooking when we were at university was of a slightly lower level. Things like, I think there was one dish that was super noodles with off Philadelphia in it, <laughs> which still have the and mold in beans. it. Baked beans. I think we made a cheese toasty once where we just put a wedge of cheddar in and an old think, pitta and then trod on it because yeah. the machine had stopped working. So th those, from those humble origins, um, we forged um, a, you know, a cooking, um, cooking collaboration. Cooking. 
I guess lockdown was quite an odd time for everyone. You had so much more spare time than you usually would, and you literally had to fill it somehow. Marcus literally spent all of lockdown. I think he completed cooking YouTube. He watched every single recipe there was. Pretty bad. You don't really want to come to a restaurant and have a quinoa salad. It's also the perfect time for it because no one can travel, so you didn't need to worry about the beach bod. So you just come here and have a massive burger. So uh, we're frying the natural chicken right now. Um, we've got a few variations of the dish. We're gonna do like a, a hot one and then like a raging one. I'm obsessed with natural hot chicken. <laughs> I think it's gonna be the showstopper, I think. Did I just catch you describing what toast is? <laughs> I was explaining what it, this, this is, was. This is nothing and it leads to a toast. No. <laughs> No, so this is not a hot chicken. Toast, so it's, um, it's a new recipe we've got. You basically just take a bit of bread <laughs> and then you eat it on both sides. <laughs> I'd say the initial ideas for the menu were a little unfocused. It was kind of diner, Italian, French, Greek. It was just everything um, with sushi as well. It's just us shouting out things that we like and then putting them all on a piece of paper. And then I think over time it's... Um, been streamlined a little. I mean, it's so weird that I would say this, but actually the thing that I think is the best, and I would be saddest if it wasn't on the menu, is the vegan burger. I have absolutely no idea what's in it. I don't know how they make the patty, but this burger is unbelievable. It's one of the tastiest burgers I've ever eaten. It's moss, um, soybeans, algae, and hemp all bound together with one of those fake eggs. I've always been a big foodie. Um, I've obviously done uh, quite a lot of traveling around the globe with my father, who I would say um, is quite closed-minded when it comes to culinary experiences. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get my dad to come down here. And we went to a few diners, he hated it so much. It's really not his type of cuisine. Mmm. Oh my God, it's so good. It's like, because the sugar balances out the heat, it's not even that hot. What's the difference between that and that? So this goes up another level because you've got what I call a devil dust on there. Devil dust. <laughs> that does not sound appealing in any way, shape or form. <laughs> How's Satan going to hit it? I find the first couple of bites is a little bit of that combat sauce on it. Oh, you're getting the sweetness? Yeah. It's absolutely okay. <laughs> you good? <laughs> and admittedly, I'm sweating, but <laughs> but it's a nice kind of sweat because you have the balance of the Stop sugar. Stop saying that. <laughs> Stop talking about the balance of the sugar. Nothing about this experience is nice. <laughs> I'm honest, I'm I could happily tuck into that. Oh, yeah, I've got a bead on. I quite like the devil. <laughs> it is yeah, admittedly very hot. The ghost chilling. So we've got like 20 days until launch. Um, the next kind of stage is getting the invites out to press. Hopefully we can build a bit of a buzz about the whole thing and then come launch day, bam, uh, um, we've got a busy restaurant. I think all the recipes are going to be actually really easy to implement and I think they'll be easy enough to do, so we should put all of them on. Not losing anything. <laughs> I'm very happy we've managed to keep everything on the menu. Um, so yeah, like the day couldn't have gone better for me. Bit stressful, but we've come to the end of it and now I'm looking forward to a drink. Mm -hmm.